so I know that you can. Okay, good. Woof. Let me start all over again. Hello, I am Jam. I'm a community educator, advocate, and TV host of Voice for All on Rogers TV. And this is my bi-weekly, sometimes monthly periscope that I do called Lessons from the Classroom because I teach during the day and I feel that um, although I am the educator, I get so many tidbits of information and lessons from my students that I need to share it with us grown-ups because there's lots of things we can learn from the younger population. So primarily my background is in special education. Um, although I do work in the mainstream classrooms and I work with all students, but my, my love, my heart and everything falls in special education. So, um, thank you for inviting followers, cutie pie. Like how wicked are you? Like shout out to cutie pie right now. <laughs> Anyways, so this lesson, all we need is love. Um, obviously it's a song title, all we need is love, but it has been the center of my thinking for the past three weeks. And I'll tell you why. Um, I work with children who it is becoming increasingly alarming how many children are not getting enough love and then they're coming to school and they're acting out. There are those acting out students. There are those problematic children. Um, if you know of these kids, give me a little heart so I know if you've ever worked in that field and you know what I'm talking about. Um, but there are those kids that we, we label, unfortunately. Once upon a time, I was that person who labeled. I labeled children. I did not see beyond the behavior. I just saw the behavior as it was and I didn't think to be a detective and try to investigate why this child might be acting that way. So basically, um, over the years through growth and, and professional building and all that stuff, I really realized that I had to look beyond the behavior and see why a child might be acting that way. As adults, we see how um, alarming mental health is. Um, What's great is that in 2016, we're actually talking about it. Um, we're promoting it. We're bringing awareness to it. Um, and people are coming out and they're breaking down the walls of stigma and shame. And they're saying, hey, I go through some, some things. We're human. We all go through some things. But I want you to think about this. The same adults that we may work with um, who might be having mental health issues, who might be going through some hardships. Imagine those people who have children. I'm working with those children and those children are coming to school and they are letting it rip. <laughs> okay. They, they are little mini adorable ticking time bombs. Um, and we are dealing with the explosions. Now as adults, when we are ticked off or we're going through things, what do we get to do to express ourselves? We go to the bar, we have a couple drinks. We might go to the gym, work off some stress. For me, I go shopping. I shop excessively that's how i let out my stress but we have sometimes areas to go and release our pain or whatever we're going through we're able to do that but if you're a child you don't have that liberty you don't have that opportunity to say hey mom peace out going outside to go blow up some steam one you don't know how to do that and two you can't because you're a kid so what do you do you come to school and you let it out with these children i've worked with um, I've always tried to think of all the right things I could say. Let me bust out my counseling techniques. Let me, um, share words of wisdom. Let me do this. When really, ultimately, all it comes down to is that these kids need love. That's what it is. Flat out love. Now, there are some people who have different perceptions on what love is. And to me, what I'm talking about, thank you for agreeing. What I'm talking about when it comes to love is a good old fashioned hug. A hug is a powerful tool. Now mind you, I ask my students, would you like a hug? I, I give them that power. I ask them permission first and foremost before I come into their space. But I have seen, and today I have really, really seen how powerful a hug is. Um, I work with children who have autism. Um, a lot of my children are nonverbal. Um, and the one child that I've supported before, um, he was having an episode. Like he came in and he just wasn't having it today. Didn't, did not want anything to do with the world. And basically I was trying to push and push and push him to kind of get the task done and, and focus on his work. Oh, your son is not verbal autism. We clearly need to talk. Clearly need to talk, cutie pie. Um, so he was nonverbal and I'm looking at his body language and I could see that he's agitated. He's, he's scratching his skin. He's screaming more. He's, he's just showing that he's not having it. I had two options. 
Um, option one was to ignore the behavior and make him focus on the task. Or option two was to take him out of the environment and just see what was up. Obviously, I went with option two. I took him out of the classroom and I sat down and I asked him, what do you need? What do you need? And I opened my arms, what do you need? And he just came and he just put his arms around my neck and he got a hug. That's what he wanted. For 25 minutes, we were outside and I was just hugging him. Deep pressure hugs. He wanted to be squeezed. He wanted to feel tight and safe. And that is all he needed to de-escalate. There was no counseling, there was no talking. It was just straight up feeling safe, feeling loved, and feeling like I understood um, what he was going through. And I think I needed that lesson because I've done this before. It wasn't the first time I've had to have done this to help one of my students de-escalate. Um, but I needed this reminder that a lot of the children that we're supporting who are acting out it's because they're deficient and they're deficient in love they're deficient in understanding they're deficient in support and they come to school where we as the adults are supposed to make them feel loved and safe and sometimes we don't really project that and so they're going to do something to get our attention and be like hello hi look into me see what's going on with me um my mom works in the office at the school and she says this all the time oh my goodness it is so like it is my number if i okay if i had a toolbox if i had a toolbox my toolbox would consist of a story because i get books where there's a lesson in it and we can have a discussion about it um and two it would be full of hugs <laughs> i'd walk around with a toolbox a toolbox full of hugs because i'm working with children who do not know what love is. They said, she said hugs, telling them they are smart. Oh my gosh, yes. One of the girls I was supporting last year was coming from a very difficult environment. Very, very difficult environment. And when I first saw her presenting behaviors, I was like, you are too much. I cannot work with you. But then I found out the background story and my, my level of understanding, my level of compassion, everything changed. Um, and I was on a mission to show her that she was loved, that she was valued, that she was appreciated, that she was smart, that she had something to contribute. Um, and I remember I asked her, did you eat breakfast? And she said, no, I didn't eat breakfast. And I go, well, why didn't you tell us that you, you didn't eat breakfast? She goes, because I'm too scared to tell you guys that. And I was like, please, if there's one thing I want you to learn today is that when you step foot into this building, you have nothing to be scared of. You have nothing to be scared of. Every single adult in this school appreciates you, cares about you, loves you, and is willing to do whatever we have to do to make sure you feel safe, happy, and strong. So please, let that fear wait for you outside in a bush. But when you come in here, know that we're here for you. Um, and I spent the morning working with her, making her feel like she was like the queen bee. Everything she did, I made a huge deal about it. You just sorted those blogs, oh my goodness, oh my Lanta, you just sorted those blogs, praises, my heart's so big, do you know how much I feel right now? I feel special, I feel happy because you made me feel good because she has not had somebody do that. She's not had someone do that. These children are coming to school and really the number one lesson they need to learn is not math, it's not science, it's not spelling, it's that they are valued. They don't know that lesson. No one has taught them that they are valued. No one, no one has taught them that they matter and that they have brains in their head and they and they could come to school and change the course of somebody. Say, nobody has done that. So if you are a parent, whoever watches this Periscope later, um, if you are a parent, if you are a teacher, one, if you're a parent, please, when you are packing your child's lunch, and their backpack pack them with some love can you pack them with some love can you can you remind them in the morning um, that you that you love them and that you wish them well and that they are little people who are gonna make a big difference in the world one day can you can you do that um, I've seen parents write little notes and I I think yes put a special note see we're on the same wavelength here cutie pie um, if I was a parent, I'm not a parent yet, but I feel like I'm a parent because I give so much of myself um, at work. But if I was a parent, I would be the parent to write notes every day in my kids' lunch so they could read it. And for the parents who do write notes to their kids, I'm that teacher who actually 
sits down with your child and writes a message back and sends it home so that parents could get some words too because parents need love as well um but yeah if you're a parent when you were packing them and getting them ready for school pack them with some love pack them with some self-esteem pack them with just the tools to know that they have something to offer and they have skills that people want to see and celebrate and acknowledge um and if you are a teacher um please see beyond the behavior save the judgment for american idol or the voice um let's stop judging our students let's stop blaming them when they're not the ones who are choosing their circumstances they're not the ones who are choosing what's happening to them um and they and their little minds they're still developing um they don't even know how to express themselves some do some do but there are a lot who don't and the only way they know how to express themselves is how they've seen others express themselves and unfortunately um the way they've seen others express themselves is in a very negative way it's a very toxic way and so i make it my mission when i go to work um I, I, I make it a mission to tell myself that I'm gonna have to give somebody love today I'm gonna have to let somebody know that they matter and at the end of the day I might be feeling really run down because I have been feeling really run down for the past two weeks I'm exerting a lot of energy but I know I'm exerting it for something good and I'm working with kids who I hope that whatever I'm instilling in them whatever I'm giving them that it's actually something that they can walk away with and um, take it, take it with them and keep it in their mind. Because I remember when I was a kid, I remember the teachers who went out of their way to make me feel good. I don't know if anyone here who's tuning in, um, if you have some good memories of a teacher who um, made you feel good, but I have some really awesome memories of teachers who did. And I unfortunately have message memories of teachers who did not. Um, and I don't wanna be that teacher. Miss Grace, yeah. Shout out to Miss Bint, Miss Maynard, Miss Petal, <laughs> Miss Barker. I'm just shouting out all my teachers right now. Um, I want to be that teacher. I want to be that teacher that when my past students grow up, they can remember that Miss Jam made them feel good, that Miss Jam made them feel safe, that, you know, Miss Jam opened up her lunch bag and gave them something because they didn't have a lunch. Or Miss Jam gave them their gloves, gave her her gloves at winter. You know what I mean? Like, I want to be that teacher. I want to aspire to be that teacher. That when my students grow up, they remember the impact I made on them. Um, those te those are mostly the teachers you remember as you reach your goal. Evil teachers have no honor. Yeah, unfortunately. Unfortunately. Um, and I would hope that if there's teachers who are feeling burnt out, that you admit that you're feeling burnt out, that you say that you you need the tools and the resources to remember why you loved your job. Um, at least once every year, I go through a week of burnout. At least. But I acknowledge it. I acknowledge that I'm burnt out. I acknowledge that I'm tired. I acknowledge that I'm not myself. Um, and sometimes I find myself a little bit on edge or maybe I'm not that super friendly person. And when I'm not that super friendly person, I apologize to my students. My battery is low, guys. Heads up. Um, I apologize to my students. I tell them that I'm sorry, that I, I shouldn't have acted like this grouch today. The same way that they're coming to school acting grouchy with me, they don't deserve for me to act grouchy with them. And so this is why it's a lesson from the classroom. Um, everything that I see, I turn it into a lesson. That's the mom I aspire to be. People say I'm, te I'm team too much, but you have to do it for the kids. You absolutely do, because you don't know. You don't know. It's the same as us adults. You don't know that maybe the compliment you, you give somebody today is the the only compliment they've received in a week. So I'd rather someone be too much than too little, <laughs> in my opinion. Um, but I, I, I love the lessons that my students teach me. I thank them for the lessons that they teach me. Um, and this is why I come on Periscope and I do vlogs and all that stuff. Um, and I share my lessons. So we give gifts to great teachers so they won't feel their work their work is not noticed oh my goodness yeah yeah and you know what the most um before my battery dies <laughs> the most um beautiful gifts i've ever received are handwritten letters don't get me wrong gift baskets are awesome <laughs> gift baskets are awesome but i remember um there's a student i was supporting who had a really terrible accident and um, I, I helped them and I didn't necessarily have to help them because it wasn't my responsibility. 
but I saw a child in need and I went and I helped them. And at the end of the year, the mom wrote me this, like I think I, I still have it, I still have this letter of this mom saying, thank you for doing that. My son felt so much embarrassment and you made him feel safe and you made him feel good. And I thank you for that. And I, and I remember reading this letter and I had like tears like just rolling down my face. I, I'm, a, I'm a big crier. I cry every single year on the last day of school. I know, I know that, yes, letters and cards are wicked. I know the last day of school is coming up. I know the last day of school is coming up. Yes, so I can't emotionally cope. I am a crier. Um, I don't do my makeup really well on the last day of school because I cry. Um, I, I miss my kids, each and every one of them, even the ones who made me run and work for my paycheck. Miss those kids. Um, so I realized that, you know, when I come to come to work, it's not just a paycheck. I'm I'm really investing myself and I'm really learning from my students and, and I get so many lessons, especially from my students who are nonverbal and have various disabilities. I've been in the field for 17 years. Um, I've been teaching for five years, but I've been in the field of developmental disabilities and supporting people with various disabilities and with various ages um, for 17 years. And each one of them, yeah, wow. <laughs> um, each one of them really and truly I've, I've taken something away from them. I've been able to apply it in some other aspects of my life. Um, and I value it. I value my relationships with them. And sometimes I, I think I get too invested and sometimes I have to learn how to turn it off. Um, but I think that's just the way I'm wired, um, is to, to, to love. So ultimately with this periscope, um, I really, 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 really hope think, and I'm, I'm not done yet. Some days I feel like I'm ready to retire tomorrow. <laughs> like right now, today, I'm ready to retire. I'm done. I'm going to pack up my box tomorrow. And being thinking about going into special needs teaching takes a great person. If and <laughs> to do, if any, <laughs> to, okay, let me address the first thing. If you want more information about this field, please contact me. I love to talk. I love to mentor. I love to do all that stuff. Um, and that's the thing. When people say they could not work with special needs, this is how I flip it. I think my phone is like at 8%, but whatever. Let me go to the bitter end. When people say, oh my goodness, how do you work with special needs? You must be like so patient. I flip the question and go, oh my God, how do you work in retail? How do you tell that person they actually look good in the outfit, but they don't, but you just want the commission, so you lie to them? How do you refold pants that someone just unfolded? How do you do that? How do you work in the restaurant business and people don't tip you? How do you deal with that? You must like, have the patience of a saint. No, I don't have the patience of the saint. Believe me when I say I do not have the patience of a saint. I think at least five times a day, I must say the words, really? Seriously? Are you serious right now? I must do that at least five times a day because I am no Mary Poppins and I'm no Mother Teresa. I actually have a vlog on that. Find it on my YouTube channel. But I think everyone has their tolerance level. I know my tolerance level and not every day I'm, I'm tolerant. Everyone has a hard soft call. Absolutely. Totally believe in that. So yeah, today I was ready to retire. I was ready to retire. I was ready to pack up my car and just take the little pension that I have that will last me a week <laughs> but you know what I'm gonna charge up and I'm gonna go back and be ready because today I dealt with some really sensitive um, situations and all those kids needed were love and I I am tired from all the hugging that I did it is rewarding I gave a lot a lot of hugs and I reassured a lot of children that they're awesome little people who I value and I appreciate and I tell them I can't wait to see them tomorrow because maybe someone doesn't tell them that so that's why <laughs> thank you dance it out and get some flowers that's why I did this periscope because when I do these periscopes one I want to teach other people and two it's my way of <laughs> taking it off <laughs> taking it off and getting ready for the next day so I'm gonna sign off um, if any of you want to continue being connected you can find me on Twitter at Miss Jam PCCS you can find me on my website, MissJam.ca, and you could also find me on my YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash, thank you, God bless you as well. Um, you can find me on my YouTube channel, um, youtube.com forward slash 
Jamila Gamble, where you'll find videos like this um, and other things that I do that revolve around education, empowerment, and just me ranting in general. So thank you to those of you who stayed and were respectful in this periscope. I'm going to re- I know I say this all the time, but I'm going to try to do this on a weekly basis. I can't pick a day of the week because my life is hectic, but I'm going to try. I promise. This is my pinky. Pinky promising you people. Okay, so thank you cutie pie and thank you- wait. Time to change it. Thank you, you two, for contributing. Um, I'm so glad you were able to take something away from this. And thank you for f making me feel good um, and being a good listening ear. So, toodaloos. And I will try to do another one later this week. So, look out for it.